We're here with curator Robert Hoffman of the Smithsonian Institution. Dr. Hoffman, you've been involved in setting up this 50th anniversary of AIDS here at the Smithsonian. Mm -hmm. What's the relationship between the Smithsonian and AIDS? Well, the most fundamental relationship is that the Natural History Museum is a member uh, organization of AIBS, but many of our curators are individual members as well, and we're happy to support uh, a blanket organization that covers all of the kinds of research we do. You were involved in setting up the program. What were your goals in selecting these particular speakers? We were looking for the most innovative and articulate speakers in their various fields that we could find. But we also wanted people who, in Ernst Meyer's words of yesterday, could look over the fence to adjacent fields. In other words, people who could bridge the gap between one discipline and another. And I think so far they've accomplished that very nicely. I would have to say, uh, seeing Ernst Meyer at age 95 and how articulate and uh, uh, thoughtful he is, and I suspect I may speak for most people in the audience. But we, see, we see a lot of challenges ahead of us as we go into this new millennium. What are some of the challenges for biological sciences and museums? I think there are somewhat different challenges for biology as a whole and for museums in particular. Uh, we in Natural History Museum are biologists or other field scientists, geologists, anthropologists, and the like. Uh, and museums in the public mind, and I suppose that goes for our elected representatives, tend to represent something uh, established maybe even old-fashioned, something comfortable, but they don't realize how important museums are in assisting in the search for new knowledge in biology that touches on every human life in many ways. We have to persuade them of our relevance. For biology, I think we have to make sure that we are not uh, simply lumped in with various other kinds of biology, uh, in particular the biomedical sciences, because we have a unique contribution to play, which is much broader in many respects than the uh, more human-oriented uh, biology that's done in NIH and other places. And that, too, uh, will require a vast effort at public education. Okay. I think one has to separate those challenges because they're somewhat different. Uh, biology is a... Which is for biological sciences in the next millennium. I think the biggest challenge may be to uh, distinguish ourselves from the biomedical sciences, which in the public mind do constitute biology. Uh, we have many other things to contribute that uh, are distinctly different from what can be done by an NIH. And in particular, the role of biology in understanding our environment and our impact on it uh, is critical in the coming century. So I would say that is our biggest challenge. I thank you for giving us this interview today. Thank you, Dr. You're quite welcome.